Hello again, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Wintermute Redux. Exactly where we left off on Saturday. We're at the top of the road leading from the engineering sheds in Broken Railroad. And we don't need to take those with us. We're already sufficiently overweight that we don't need to, to worry about them. Um, and we're hopefully heading back to Jeremiah. Let's see if we can do it without any serious incidents. Such as getting surprised and ambushed by the old bear. And this of course is where he jumped us last time. And then we came across um, Methuselah with his campfire down by those rocks. So we've got to figure a way to get through this train wreck. And I suspect these logs are our route. Oh, don't fall off. How do we get down? Do we go down that log or do we go further over? Um, whoa, whoa. I don't think we can go that way. And have I just trapped myself in there? I may well have. I may have to reload this. Um, yeah. Good one, guys. Oh no, there we go. Right, now I've got a choice here. I can stay high on the railway tracks, or I can try and cut down through that clearing. I can't remember if there's anything down in that clearing that's going to be useful to us in any way, so I think I'll stay high. Even though this gives us probably a higher risk of hitting a cutscene. But it also gives us a lower risk of getting sprained ankles and wrists. Because the, at least the terrain here is a lot flatter. When you see me dodge sideways like that... It's because I've seen something up ahead, and I'm not sure if it's a, a wolf or a bear. And cutting sideways gives me a clearer view, and also allows me to track if it's on the move or not. Let's just have a quick look down here. Well, there's all those reishi, which we don't really need. So I'm going to leave them there. Uh, we've got mountains of prepared reishi back at the camp office. And I don't want to be carrying a lot of reishi around all over the different maps. If I can leave it in place and come get it when I need it. Now, we did have a challenge. Let me just check. Oops, wrong. We did have a challenge side challenge um survival school ah we've got to kill a wolf in mystery lake now that's okay we've done fall on muskeg and broken railroad and we've got to hunt and kill a stag we can do that in mystery lake because i don't want to be hunting animals deliberately hunting animals with the the flare gun it's just not accurate enough so you live another day, Mr. Mr. Stag. Might get you next time if we have to come back here. And it's for this game, it's perfect weather. Our temperature's not dropping. There's no wind. The skies are reasonably clear. I dare say we'd even, well, we should even be able to use the magnifying lens to start a fire if we need to. 
The wind is starting to pick up though, I can hear it. Which is kind of typical. No doubt by the time we get to the other side of that rockfall, I mean we could go over the rockfall, but I want to get this supply cache down here. Um, by the time we get to the other side of that rockfall, the wind will be up. It's starting to get misty. And I'd rather not push through the muskeg if it's going to be foggy. Just after midday, it's the equivalent of about 1pm. So we may end up overnighting in the rail tunnel. Which means we'll have to collect some decent firewood as we move down here. As we move out from here, I should say. So remembering there's a wolf down here. And we've got to cross a log bridge. And then we're into his territory. And we left a lot of natural supplies available t to ourselves on the way in that we're not going to be able to pick up on the way back, so... That's going to be... useful if we do have to make a second trip in here. Okay. Let's just focus on this log bridge, try and get across it without an incident. And... Come on, get off it. Get off it. Which way are you going to go? I don't want to go that way. And I don't want to fall down that way. Let's... Come on. Get up and up. Get off it. Come on. Which way have you got to go? They've changed the geometry here. There we are. Got it. So, doing just like I did that. There's the wolf. Okay, if he's down there, that gives us lots of time to go look for this supply cache, which is where I originally looked for it when we were coming into the engineering sheds three, four episodes ago. I believe from the map, it's down in this corner. It used to be a dead guy with a backpack. Um, I don't know what it'll be now. I would imagine it's another supply box. Let's just check the map. It's just to our left. You see how the white arrow is just on the right hand side of that box. So, probably tucked into this rock here. Yep, there it is. find something here. Rugged climbing socks, I'll take them. Wool long johns, I'll take. Take the flare. Mm, don't really need to carry the bottle of water, but pick it up for now. Take the sewing kit. Before we do anything else, let's just check the inventory. Uh, we're nearly two kilos above our overweight allowance. 35 is our regular carrying limit because of the well-fed buff. You can go to 10 kilos above that before it slows you down and starts making you fatigued quicker. We're 1.89 kilos above that. We probably do need that bottle of water. We've got 2.3 litres after picking it up. Um, we can't wear those socks immediately or those long johns. They've got to be repaired. They're 0.75 of a kilo between them. So we'll just leave them in the backpack and we're going to have to face this wolf. Luckily we don't have to go back over the hills, we can just come around the river here, there he is. Be 
beauty of this is that I know he's there. He knows I'm here. I don't have a piece of bait to drop for him. So I'm going to have to just hold my ground. And then... Snap a shot at him like that. Reload the weapon. The shot didn't hit him and the flares burnt out very quick. It must have sank into the river. I didn't see which way he went. Oh, here he comes. That one hit him. You can see the, the blood splatter. That one hit him. He's going to die. We don't need his meat, or his skin, or his guts. We don't want to be carrying the smell around with us. So we'll just let him run away and die. That leaves us with 19 flare shells, plus the one in the gun, that's 20. We don't have any other range weapon with us. A little disappointed that we had to use two shells on him. Should have hit with the first one. Um, but it's done the job. We've got through there without being attacked. And we won't have to worry about him for the remainder of our time here on Broken Railroad. Now, I did say on the way in that... One of the things I wanted to do was to go up through that passage, around the back of that rock, and then down onto the railway again. Has he fallen over yet? No, he's still wandering around. Look, he's going to keel over any moment. See how he's lifting his front left paw and limping? That's the animation to say, I'm about to die. He might not even make it back down to the river. Like I said, we don't need to harvest him. We're carrying lots of food and we're seriously overweight. But what we will need to do is start collecting some sticks because we're probably going to need to spend the night in the open unless we can make it down to the poachers camp. And I do want to detour via the hunting blinds which, given the time of day, I don't think we'll make it to um, the poachers camp. Certainly we will not make it through to Mystery Lake. So we, I'm... Mm, it's too early to make camp in the rail tunnel yet. We'll see how we get on. What I might be able to do is to do the first hunting blind and then get through to Poacher's Camp, set up camp for the night there and then do the second hunting blind and press on to Mystery Lake in the morning. which may well be the wise, wiser plan rather than trying to rush ourselves when we don't have to taking the time to do things safely and steadily so that we do get them done is probably the smarter move on that basis, I don't really want to pick up any more sticks. There should be plenty of sticks at the uh, poacher's camp, which is the, derail the derailment of the orange and red rail cars where we stayed overnight um, and we left all of that uh, meat, deer and wolf meat, in the snow when we were coming through the Broken Railroad. It would be a shame to have all that meat there and not use some of it. So we can eat some of that tonight, get a fire going, get that cooked up. I think I probably don't want to pick up any more firewood at all. I'm going to eat and drink before we pass through the tunnel. I'll also save the game at that point.
Right, so while we're out of the wind, if I just stand here, we'll get something to eat and drink. We're looking at needing about 700 calories. So let's see what we've got in the pack. Um, we're not carrying any tins or cans. So... I think what we can probably afford to do... Eat that low calorie bar. That low condition bar. Then eat a pair of these. And in fact, we can probably, I would, yeah, I would say if we eat another pair of those, just to keep our calories topped up, and then take a drink. And do a quick save. Right, so what we'll actually do now, that'll be the last save in Broken Railroad. And we'll move on to the other save for uh, the Muskeg. Right, and the muskeg has turned very foggy. The muskeg with fog is a very, very dangerous place. So, I do want to get to the low hunting blind. Fortunately, it's not a huge detour. I'm sure we left some supplies up there. I didn't notice them as we come past. Oh, and there's a wolf. I'm going to go high. That way, if he wants to come up, uh, and he does, we're going to have to do the same as we did before. I'm not sure if we hit him or not. The flare didn't seem to stick, and it went out very, very fast. I don't think we did hit him. He stopped running. You sure you want to do this? Whoa, you see that slide he did sideways there? Now that one I am sure hit him, but it's not sticking to him, and he's not burning, and he's coming back again. Very sketchy wolf this one. We want to be getting across here to get to that hunter's blind. He's staying over there, as long as he's staying there, we'll press on. See, there's the hunter's blind that I want to get to. We do have to come back past that wolf. We should be able to skip across the islands, though, on the way back. Big question is, where's the, where's the regular bear? Not the old bear, the regular bear. Is he in story mode? We don't know. We didn't see him on the way through. This might turn into a slightly longer episode than the episodes last week because it's going to take a little bit of extra time to get back along to the poachers camp which you can just see the... is it there? No, it's further along. It's roughly where that fallen tree is.
just a reminder that one of the main reasons I'm coming to check out this Hunter's Blind is to see if there is a revolver here, but also what other loot there is. I don't think I'm going to need to touch any of the cattails, which is good because it means that they're there if we have to come back into the muskeg. Good look round. There's rifle ammunition. Piece of firewood down there, which will be heavy. Another rifle cartridge. Don't need that antiseptic, it's too heavy. Oh, what happened? Anything in the backpack? The crunchy stuff. Another crunchy stuff. Condition of the sardines, I'll take them. Pork and beans. They're risky. Right. Um, how's our weight? 47.16. We can't afford to pick up that firewood. What I can afford to do is move this piece of firewood from here up into the hunter's blind with those t two and just to quickly put those sticks there which will let them respawn so that we end up with even more because that's the way the game rolls A little stash of four sticks and three pieces of firewood. We got a few candy bars and stuff. And there's cattails all around here that we've not touched. And we've got about two to three hours of daylight left, which gives us enough time to get back. Now I don't want to cut across that ice, there's a very high risk that it's weak ice, but I do see a land bridge up here, which means that we can avoid that whole corner ahead of us by cutting across here. Um, I can't remember if we left something with the dead guy at the train, I think we left him with a pair of boots, didn't we? I don't see the wolf. Always stay on the banked up snow when you're crossing the, the muskeg ice, unless there's a piece of ice that you know is safe. Now the dead guy up there has got a pair of boots with him, and there's a deer on the island just there, which we're not going to go harvest. We're going to leave it. Only harvest the resources that you need. That way if you come back through, then... Oh, that's the cattail heads from when we took the cattails. Um, that way when you come back through, you've left yourself supplies for a return visit. Right, we've definitely got time to push on through to the poachers camp. It's possible we've also got time to push on through to the other hunting blind now that the weather has cleared and we've got perfect visibility. Very 
very unusual to have visibility this clear in the muskeg. Here in another set of... Oh, that, there they are. Like I say, I'm hearing another set of crows and I don't know where they are. Now, what is that? don't know what that is. It, it kind of looks like a wolf standing guard on the railway, but I don't think it is. Probably the broken rails, but there is a wolf up there. Look, he's crossing the ice to the right of the, the rail line. Very frustrating and annoying that they can cross the ice like that. Because a full-grown wolf is as heavy as a man. And we're going to have to throw at least one flare shell at him. And unfortunately, with no decoys, there's no way that we can lure him in. We've got to wait for him to charge and get close enough to hit him with the flare gun. And he's spotted us, yeah. Oh, and he's coming in fast. Come on, then. That hit him. That's one dead wolf. Blood on the snow there. He's run up he's run off across towards the other forge. See him there. And again, I'm not picking up the cattails. We've got meat at the poachers' camp. We don't need to harvest any resources. The only thing we might need to do is make water. I can't remember if we left any there or not. I hear wolves ahead of us. Uh, if you watched my um, Voyager 1000 Day Attempt video series, this is where I had the battle with the wolf pack. I had the bear behind me up there that I was trying to get away from, and I had a pack of four wolves ahead of me. It was four or five, I can't remember. And I had to take them on. I had two, maybe three flare pistol shells left. Um, managed to hit one of the wolves. The rest of them I had to go hand to hand with, and I ended up using a stim pen to reach the derailment up here and the poachers' camp, where I then made a fire and bedded down and recovered condition across the course of a couple of days before I could move on to Mystery Lake. Now we've got another wolf there, but I don't know if he's going to go wide enough that we can save a flare shell. I'd rather not use one if I don't have to. I don't know what his patrol route is. Now he's coming back towards the railway. Well, if he's going to be coming back on our side of the railway, let's get to a point where we can see him. Let's give him a bit of space, see how far he crosses in uh, over to the right. better not to use up our munitions and obviously it's better to not get into a, a melee with them sidestep so we keep him in view I don't want to step down onto the ice I want to stay on the snow don't know how far out he's going to go. And it seems that their um, trigger range is quite short. However, where's the deer hide gone? Or did we take it back to the wagon? I think we did take it back to the wagon, but we've now got decoys that we can drop.
There he is, he's coming in quite docile. That's going to let me do that to him. So he's dead. See how much easier it is if you've got a decoy to drop. Because they come in all docile, focused on the decoy, not paying attention to you. Gives you a nice clean shot at them. That's us down to 16 rounds. Flag on ammunition's dropping rapidly. And I don't believe we've got any further uh, supplies that we can harvest until we go around the edge of this map. There's a pair of wolves across. On. There's a wolf somewhere across there, beyond those tree stumps. I got a glimpse of him. I thought it was a pair, but I think the second one was actually a tree stump. Now, the other hunter's blind that I want to get to, I can't actually remember exactly where it is. It's either down there on the other side of those rocks, or it's out there on those rocks. You can just see the glow from that wolf that we shot running over there. Coming up right onto sunset now, so we're going to have to spend the night here. Let's just try and gather some wood as we prepare to go into the, the, the derailment. sticks here. Well, in terms of sticks, that'll have to be enough. We're going to have to cut some big wood. drop one of the guts here, but we're only carrying one of them. Uh, we left some wood here, that's good, and some coal. So, if I drop the excess sticks, I can drop nine of them here. Always keep my 15 for making a snow shelter. We don't have a lot of wood here, but I noticed that the the branches have respawned. So in fact they're cedar, they're not fur. Make sure there's no wolves anywhere in the vicinity. There's a, a deer carcass over there by the look of those crows. And there's the hunter's blind down there. Just behind that fallen tree. That's where we've got to go in the morning. not losing temperature yet so I'm not seeing any movement on the ice that looks like the bear. Let's have that cedar as well. And I think we'll have what condition is that? 45%, 671 calories. We'll take that. And that piece of wolf. Yeah, the deer skin's there. 
Right, so let's have a look. Take a stick to start the fire. Um, we'll have wrong. Have a torch out. Light the torch. Come on. There we go. Light the fire barrel. Using the torch. fuel. Let's throw one of them on for a second so we put the torch out. That away. Um, six and a half hours. Give that bit of fur. Gives me nine hours nineteen. Check the time of day. Ooh, we definitely want a bit more on there. I'm going to use one of these bits of coal. Minutes before coal can be added, fifteen. Okay, we'll add that in a minute. Um, we've got one liter of water here. So if I put the the pot on there to make two litres of water and then I cook that piece of steak wherever it's gone that's a full kilo on the gamey wolf three quarters of a kilo on the venison 42 minutes to do the venison Have I got any crafting that I can do to just pass 15 minutes? Uh, nothing that I want to do. Well, I could make that other extra fishing kit up. That's 10 minutes. Which passes a little bit of time. Can we add the coal now? Yes. There's 10 hours. Which will get us through to sunrise because we'll get this fire barrel counts as being outside so we get extra burning time on it. So if I just pass time now on that venison. Take that and cook the wolf meat wherever it's gone. There it is. That's an hour and nine. Probably similar time to the, the water. Um, looking at our calories. I think we'll save the, the venison for the morning. Fifty-seven minutes for the water to finish cooking. Fifty-seven minutes for the wolf meat to finish cooking. Excellent. So in that case, we we'll cook and eat the wolf. And finish cooking the water. Take the water, pick up the pot. Check our inventory. Carrying four litres of water. Let's drop two litres. 
better find some water. And then we'll take a drink. Keep all of this water here. Unless we find ourselves short of water after having a drink at breakfast. We left something in there, didn't we? What was it? Oh yes, some clothes. Um, we're going to struggle to take them back, although I might take the toque and the gloves. They're not particularly heavy. Um, I'm going to take them. I guess I should take them now. Ah, didn't mean to take that uh, sweater. Although it is in a good condition, 96%. I think that's what we were wearing when we first came through here. Um, we're wearing cargo pants, uh, work pants and military pants. So leave the jeans here. They're not leaves a piece of clothing to break down for cloth if necessary. Right, eight and a quarter hours on the fire. That's enough to get us through to dawn. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sleep for eight hours and I'll end the video there. So thank you very much for watching everybody. Hope you've enjoyed it. Um, we'll go to the other hunting blind in the next episode and then leave the muskeg heading back to Jeremiah's. And I look, hope to see you join me for that one. I'm Gazbeard. This is The Long Dark Winter Mute Redux, episode 2. And we're now on the Forlorn Muskeg map, heading back through to Mystery Lake and the Trapper's Cabin, with the Bear Spear repaired. And at some point we're going to have to face the, the old bear, and I'm not exactly looking forward to that. I've got a feeling he's going to give me a severe kicking. But do join me for that. From me for now, as always, it's not goodbye, it's just bye for now. <laughs>